All right, all right, all right. Guru here. I know it's been a minute since I did a video. Um, now that we're, it looks like for the foreseeable future, we're, we're through uh, the nasty uh, weather we're experiencing and and everything's just been running high and, you know, there hasn't been much fishing. Uh, to the folks that braved the elements and went out and found some fish, hey, they sent me pictures, so uh, there was fish to be caught. You know, I don't, I don't generally uh, uh, do that kind of fishing anymore. <laughs> um, you know, I just... Uh, uh, Man, I spent a lot of years doing that fishing in just shit conditions and, you know, just, I, we always called it paying dues. We're paying dues, you know, for what's coming up and, and, uh, you know, it's not that I'm afraid to do it. It's just, I try to avoid it. When you get older, you have so many more things that you have to do. So, you know, I'm so busy right now. It's ridiculous. I can't, I can't, I don't, having a day job and then trying to do all this is just, it's, it's tough, man. It really is. It's such a slow process. It, you know, it doesn't happen near as fast as I would like it to, but, um, um, you know, it, it's okay. I'm enjoying the ride. So, but, uh, we're coming out of the weather. Finally, we're going to get some rain. It's so it's Tuesday. 610 is what I got. So uh looks like we're on the backside of all this heavy rain. Everything's finally starting to drop. I think the Wilson when I called this morning was already down to about 75. You know, everything else was running two or three feet higher. The Nestucco, I believe, was about eight and a half. We'd like to see that down around seven, six and a half, seven. Um you know, the Alce, it was running, I think, at like eight and a half. You know, I I think the Alce fishes best at five and a half, in my opinion. Um, some guys like it at six. I fished it at six when it had really good color, you know. Uh, but that, that five and a half mark seems to be five, five and a half seems to be perfect um, for the Alce. But, you know, everybody's got their their favorite river levels and stuff like that. Oh, let me shut off the furnace. <laughs> that was getting loud. My man cave, our furnace to the house is in my man cave. So it gets a little loud sometimes, but um, uh, yeah, man. So we're, we're coming out of it. Like I said, tonight we're supposed to get another big shot of rain. I don't think anything is going to go up real hard because then it's we're in this drying period for it looks like at least seven or eight days um to everybody who can if you can play hooky from work tomorrow um you know i would definitely consider that because the north fork nehalem and the nicanicum um are probably going to fish about as good as you could fish them tomorrow um Everything was dropping down into shape, so it all looked real good. Uh, you know, I think they had Monday's report when I called this morning. I didn't see if they did a Tuesday report yet. Um, they may have, but Monday's report, it was at 68, and the North Fork drops fast. So does the Nicanicum. So if you can take off any time this week, even with the big shot of rain we're getting tomorrow, um, you know, Thursday, Friday, man, uh, dude, the North Fork and the Nicanicum should just be in the primo, primo conditions. And, um, hey, there's another thing. Um, so on the Nicanicum, the forested timberlands where all the parking is and everything, um, Lewis and Clark timberlands. And, uh, of course, you know it, Oregon State Police Get that revenue, OSP. Um, they got a good little scam going on where uh, if people are parked in those spots like at Black Bridge, further down at the Crossover Bridge, Kaluchi Klu Creek Park, if you happen to walk in on their lands, which is stupid, um, they're giving everybody and their brother's cousin a trespassing ticket 
criminal trespass because, you know, fishermen are all criminals, according to OSP. Um, you know, you can get those passes from Lewis and Clark for free. Um, you can go online to Lewis and Clark Timberlands and get a pass. You got to carry it on you. I think you get two. You put one in your truck, you carry it on you. So avoid the little scam OSP has and, and Lewis and Clark. It's probably more OSP convincing Lewis and Clark, but I don't blame them, Lewis and Clark, because I know in that area there's a lot of dumping, and then they have to pay to have that cleaned up. Uh, Warehouser goes through the same thing. That's why, you know, a lot of their stuff is permitted now, because of all the Ill illegal dumping. And so I'm, I'm you know, I'm okay with... A permit system like that or you know something but you know the revenue gathering by the Oregon State Police come on man if you see a guy walking down Kaluchi Creek Road there you know carrying two rods and you know man he's not a criminal he's not trespassing there to po poach wood or anything like that you guys are just doing it to gather revenue you're just creating criminals and it's you know, it just says everything that we need to know about OSP and their tactics they use to gather as much revenue as they possibly can. Damn the poachers. They can, you know, they can they can survive. But, uh, you know, the law abiding citizens who who happen to forget to get a permit, you know, they're criminals. The, remember, you're a criminal because you didn't hit add to cart. According to OSP, I'm a I'm a hardcore criminal because I forgot to hit add to cart. All right, enough of the tirade. Um, anyways, uh, just re if you're fishing in the Canicum, be mindful of that that area. Now up by Highway 53, there's a nice little spot back in there. That's not Lewis and Clark. Um, there's some other spots you got to kind of hunt around for them. Um, the uh, Oh, I forget. I think it's called Nicanicum Sand and Gravel, or it might be Seaside Sand and Gravel. They were offering, I think you could buy, I think it was like 50 bucks a year. You could go in on their lands down there. Um, there's some spots right down near Tidewater, too, where you'll see, just before you get into Seaside, where you'll see some people pulled off to the side of the road. Um, you can go down and fish that, but that that gravel company, they were offering a permit. They even had a thing for a while there. Uh, it was like 50 bucks a year um, for those who were floating from Kaluchi Creek Park down. Um, it was like 50 bucks a year and you could take out there. Um, there's no shuttles in there, but it's not that far, you know, walk back up the road. Um, but there's some really neat holes down in there. But beware, I have not floated that in probably about 10 years. And there is always timber down in there. Um, I think my buddy Albert and his buddy Brian, the last time they did, uh, they had to portage around a couple real bad log jams. So I don't know if the guides who do guide on the Nicanicum are, are cutting those out. But um, yeah, man, just there's always some hairy log jams. Um, if you do float that, always be very careful. I know it's a small river. But, man, those log jams, you can come around a bend, there's a log jam, it's bad news, or you can't get around it, or, you know, just always be mindful uh, on the Nicanicum of that. But definitely the next probably three days, the North Fork Nicanicum, you know, that that's going to be off the charts as far as quality conditions. Whether or not the fish are there, it's just the conditions will be right. But I know they've had several really, really good days on the North Fork. They've already recycled fish um, to Vernonia Pond. So if you want to go throw some spinners up in Vernonia uh, for some recycled steelhead, you can. Um, oh, they they used to put them up at Lost Lake, too, above Spruce Run. And Coffinberry was, uh, was the other uh, place where they they used to put quite a few recycled steelhead. But uh, they always have that on the hotline number. Uh, so, you know, they give up that information for free. But that's where I would be. And 
this weekend, you know, everything's going to be fishable. You know, pack your patience because there's going to be a lot of people out fishing this weekend. Like I always say, if you can fish the weekdays, let, you know, they're, they're always the best. Less people and unless you're fishing the Wilson, then it doesn't matter. It's a fucking Tuesday and, you know, the world's ending and there's 20,000 drift boats on the Wilson. But hey, man, we put 3 million people in this state in the last 20 years. It's, shit's going to get crowded. Um, But yeah, this weekend should be great. Uh, the contest winners, uh, we couldn't fish last weekend, so we're going to fish this weekend. Um, also, hey, the other thing. I got a bunch of people that have won stuff that haven't contacted me. Uh, the people, I already did the tackle kits. Um, we're going to do uh, this weekend. I'll probably send out all the hoodies out on Sunday. Um, but hey, I got a bunch of names here that people never contacted me for their stuff. So back fishing. You got a tackle kit, buddy. I'm giving everybody till the end of the week. If you don't contact me, then you ain't getting it. So back fishing, you got a tackle kit. Uh, Olea 55044, you got a tackle kit. Uh, Dave Orniff, I probably got that wrong. Sorry, bud. Um, you got a tackle kit. YYOHH, you got a hoodie. And F-O-R-B-3-Z, you got a hoodie also. You guys got to contact me. If you don't contact me by, uh, I'll give you till, if you don't send me your email with your information where I can send the stuff by Sunday, then you ain't getting it. You lose out. So if I don't start getting some emails, uh, you know, to acidegg1 at gmail.com. That's A-C-I-D-E-G-G, -G, numeral one, at gmail.com. Let me know. And I finally, the new sport fishing regulations. Isn't that a great picture? Which brings me up. I've been thinking about how to address this all week. It was a comment one of the haters made. And trust me when I say <laughs> I had a lot of people that see that and really wanted to go after this guy because what he said was just kind of, you know, it's typical. You know, it didn't surprise me about what he said. It was more about what he said. And then I was like, you know, um, I knew what he was saying wasn't true. But how how do I address this in the right way? You know, um Everybody knows, and I've mentioned it more than one time, I have a hidden river. In fact, I have several hidden rivers. There are three hidden rivers that are not in this book that are near my home in McMinnville, Oregon. Three. I have found over 20 in the state of Oregon that are not in this book. They exist. But you have to get out there. You have to be wild and you have to define them. Now, this particular comment, and it's not hard, it was my last video, but everybody leave him alone. He made the comment that he, he basically said, you know, how I don't tell people about my hidden river, but I tell about everybody else's hidden river. If the river has salmon and steelhead, it's in this book, and it's not hidden. If it's in this book, Anybody on fucking planet Earth can see it. There's no doubt about that. There are, if you're fishing the Tillamook area, there's nothing hidden other than the stuff that is either on private property and you can't walk to or you don't have a boat to float it to see it. You know, there's nothing hidden. I was the person who went out there and explored and was wild and found Hidden River, found three Hidden Rivers near me. You know, I've never given information on anything that's not well known for that reason. 
I definitely want people to get out there and explore. There's a lot of stuff that I never say anything about, you know, exclusive areas of, you know, the Wilson, the Trask, the Nestucca, the Kilchis, stuff that unless you have been fishing it for close to 40 years like me, you wouldn't know, you know, A, because you haven't stopped there. B, you know, you've never bothered to go look. Um, you know, sometimes there there's one place I fish, and I'm not the only one, but it's so overlooked. People don't even realize how good that it is, but they just drive right by it. Even in boats, they'll just float right through it. They won't even try to fish it. But the people who know will always stop there. And it's actually a spot, it's not that far down below, uh, uh, well, I'll just say it's in between Mills Bridge and Siskiville. And it's a spot I've watched, in one day I probably watched 20 boats go right through it and just wait till there's, you know, they get by, hook a fish right there. Um, and you can get to it from shore. Uh, but it's better from a boat. <laughs> but there is, you know, but I ain't the only one. I've I've tried to fish that before and there's three or four guys in there and people, you know, if it doesn't look like nothing, you should go look at it anyways because it might be something. You know, always, always don't overlook even the smallest of water or the oddest looking piece of water or boily water, or anything like that. Don't ever, you know, even chocolate water. Um, you know, don't overlook it. You can still catch fish in chocolate water if you know where to be. In fact, there's a very dedicated group of guys on the Lower Wilson that will go plunk in that chocolate water and do quite well. So, which leads me to my next thing, fishing high water. So we'll stay with the Wilson, but it could be a number of rivers. So many of Oregon's rivers have a highway on them. You know, if you're coming down the river or going up, water's, you know, uh, we'll just, for for this purpose, we'll say we're on the Wilson, we're coming down, you know, we're, we're coming from the valley down. Um, we already know that it's high. But as we're coming down, we see that the water looks good. Water's looking good. You know, I want you to follow that good looking water as far as you can to the point to where it's not good looking water. So in other words, good looking water, nice steelhead green water. And all of a sudden you'll see it start. Oh, maybe there's a tributary putting some color into it. Oh, it's, it's dark and stuff like that. Turn around, go back up to the first hole above that nasty water. And stay there all day. Do not leave that hole. Because steelhead hate shit in their gills. They will actively seek out places that doesn't have all that silt and sediment and nasty. They do not like it. And when they get to a spot where they don't have all that in their gills. Even if it's just a little brown. You know. But not, you know, the heavy dark chocolate. They'll hang out in that little bit of brown. They do not like that. And so you want to, you, that's where you want to fish is just out of that. Um, you know, it, it, right now it couldn't be any more imperative because everything's so high. You know, like say you're driving up the Nestucca and there's lots of public ground up there that you can go fish. But, you know, you get up to Fourth Bridge and it's freaking chocolate milk. Keep driving, drive up the river. So you find where it's not chocolate, where it's clean water, pick the first good hole and stay there. Don't leave it. It might take a while or it might be immediate, but fish will come to that hole. They have to get out of that nasty water. There's no getting around that. You know, I was actually, I just can't get over it. This is probably the best looking fishing picture we've had in a while. Isn't that a good picture? On the gorge, there's snow and shit. Beautiful sturge. I need to get out there. I haven't caught a keeper sturgeon in years. Not since Hannah was, oh, little. And we used to go out to Prescott Beach and go play all kinds of sturgeon. 
But you know how I roll and two things. So has anybody noticed the fucking prices of floats these days? I went, you know, I kind of stocked up on bobber dog and floats now that I'm actually doing it and, and, uh, you know, uh, I noticed how expensive they are. They're just fucking ridiculous. Two floats for 10 bucks. You tell me those fuckers are, you know, they're probably made in China or Thailand or something and they're doing them for a quarter. 10 bucks for two floats. Whatever. Well, I'm working on a way that we can not pay that fucking $10. So I got a couple ideas in mind. I'm going to test them both out this weekend and then I'll do a video on that, whether or not they work. But I have something I want to share with you guys. Um, something I've been thinking about since I got them. And I don't know. I I have a feeling this could be something huge. So let's start right here. Everybody knows what these guys are. These are earplugs. Um, now I have, I don't know, I fucking see fishing and everything. But I have played around. How could I make these work for fishing? Um, these specific ones, not like foam, but these ones because they have the little, uh, you know, the little segments to them, you know. And they just look like, if you look at that, isn't that a perfect spot for some gel scent? Specifically, Procure. And lately it's been the Sardar, uh, Sardine and Sand Shrimp um, has been, I love those Procure, excuse me, the Procure gel scents that their jelly seems to be not like, how should I say this? It's, it's sticky, but yet it's still, it's not like, you know, hard. It's still, I don't know, it just seems to lay to the baits better. There's a few others on the market, but the shit's thick like fucking Vaseline like hard Vaseline and they, the pro cure, I just think has it down. The other one I want to mention is bloody tuna. That's uh, last year. Um, that was the flavor, but this year so far that's, I've been doing a little bit of sardine, a little bit of, uh, of sand shrimp, but how could I make a bait out of that? Cause doesn't that, I don't know. I, I guess I, I'm seeing shit. I picked a good time to start smoking peyote huh anyway <laughs> anyway look at that isn't that cool and then you can put scent in here like this you can fold these back fill that full of scent you can even put the scent in there boom push that down isn't that a cool looking little bait i don't know you know is it gonna need a bumper right there Will that hold? I'm pretty sure it will. It's solid right in there. These ones do, this particular brand, they have a little little hole right there in them. But how I did that, let's do this real fast. We'll do an orange one. You can see this was green. And these are UV too. So, but yeah. So what I did is I just peeled that sucker back like that. And I suppose you could use the foam ones. It's just I like these better. I just like that segmentation there. I thought that looked nicer. So we'll get our trusty handy dandy threader. I bought a couple more that were a little bit longer and just a little more flatter right here so they don't mess up your soft plastics. Just to maybe do a little longer worm. And of course, so basically we're just going to thread that right through there. So right in the middle. And it comes out right in the hole right there. Thread that down. Oh, boy, look how sharp that sucker is. <laughs> Gummies. Kamagatsu. And then here we'll put that through there. I 
like that. Look at that. And that's, oh, that's sexy. I mean, that is just, that is absolutely sexy. Don't tell me that won't catch a steelhead. You know it will. We'll call these earplug baits. Now, I suppose, here, I, I bought a whole fucking canister. Uh, it was like nothing. I don't know, like six bucks or whatever. Um, but yeah, there's the two colors that I chose. But there, there's pink ones, there's blue. I mean, you know, I'm sure they probably have multicolored somewhere. But what's cool is they these are UV, man. I put them under the light. They work good. But I have no doubt that's going to... Can you imagine barber dog in that? Isn't that sweet? I, I almost thought you could maybe um, tie something between the segments. That might be a good idea too, but... Just something new for you guys. I've been working on going to, you know, solve the float problem for us. So everybody can stop fucking paying $10, $10 man. Um, one thing, hey, the Sportsman Show is coming up. So um, if you got, you know, some money, they always have gear on sale, you know, for considerably cheap prices. Like last year, I got my edge rods. I bought two of them. And, uh, God, it was only, it was 500 for the two and they're normal, like four or 500 a piece. So, you know, it's it, it, save a little bit of money. The sportsman shows right around the corner. I think it's, I don't think it's I th actually, I think it's next week, maybe the following weekend. Um, I usually don't go every year. I don't know if I'm going to go. I try to go every other year. Just, you know, so I see some new stuff. They don't always have new stuff every year, you know. Not not, <laughs> not a lot of innovation. Um, but uh, hopefully that works for you guys, man. But, hey, I got a bunch of new subscribers this week. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for trusting in me. That's what keeps this going. Keeps my ideas going, you know, uh, keeps everything, keeps me always thinking about how we can improve together, you know, fishing and, uh, you know, we're just going to keep this thing going, you know, build the network so everybody can, can, uh, can enjoy the fruit. You know what I mean? Can enjoy the fruit, but, uh. Thank you, everyone. I greatly appreciate it. You have no idea um, how thankful and how grateful I am uh, that you support me. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, the float thing. And then um, uh, I have a subject that I want everybody to think about till next time. And that is hatcheries. More importantly, that I want you to think about how you can build your own hatchery yourself just imagine that uh, think about this hard building your own hatchery where you can raise your own fish and we can have millions of salmon and steelhead going into our rivers doesn't that sound awesome <laughs> i got away i'm figuring this shit out they're gonna try to stop us fuck them we want more salmon and steelhead so that being said god bless Tight lines, shoot straight, guru out.